college students. Suicide is the second cause of death. And the largest group that is increasing are white males over 50. So it's not just children. I mean, it is everybody. It's across every social, economic class. It's black, white, Hispanic, Polish, Slovak, whatever. Um, but it's across everywhere. And so the purpose of today, and we hope that the media will also help us, this will be the first school year that teachers and the school personnel can get trained. So we're helping through TV, also through the paper, because we also sent out emails. We're also sending um, letters to all the superintendents in the state and also to the principals to make sure that everyone in the school gets trained because you never know when just that one conversation stops someone from hurting themselves. Okay? We'll be happy to entertain any questions. Uh, a few weeks ago, I was interviewing Dr. Campo from Ohio State and about mental health stories. He was very passionate about the fact that suicide is such a, a leading cause of death. He said if this were a disease, it would be, we'd have telethons, we'd have ribbons, we'd have everything, and yet you folks are here, but we don't have that kind of reaction. So any of you, why, why doesn't the public, why doesn't government, why doesn't everything get involved with that the same way we do with Pelotonia or with anything else? Why is that? Um, I will start, and then I think Clark Flat probably has a lot more um, statistics. But, uh, but I, I, I do think the stigma that is associated with it I, I know when I, I lost um, my son Joe, you know, people ask, oh, how did he pass? And as soon as you say that, because I'm not going to hide it, you, you can see, oh, you know, and the conversation usually stops. So, first of all, we need to break down the barriers of the stigma. And it's okay to talk about it. And just because you talk about it doesn't mean that you're increasing someone's thought of doing or acting upon but I think the more we talk about it, the more education that is out there for the, the students themselves and also the teachers and the personnel, we're going to reduce that number. And I know that that has been reduced in Tennessee, so we already have the factual information to back that up. I'll just, just echo what she said. When, we, when I lost my son in 1997, uh, we started the foundation in, in October of that year. Uh, very little was being done on a national basis. We have seen, even though there's a great deal to be done, uh, we've come a long way since 1997-98. Just like having a Suicide Prevention Month and having, as you passed it here on September 10th, Suicide Prevention Day, it, it all begins with awareness. What we have found is once we have media, once we have people of, of high profile, that's what General DeWine and, and, and Dr. Gee and uh, Urban Meyer, who we worked with while he was in Florida, uh, and here in Ohio, the Ohio State, he taught me how to say the Ohio State. University. He's at university. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I'm still learning. I'm still learning. Okay. okay. Uh, but these individuals are helping people talk about it in a positive way. As Representative Manelski said, it's, it doesn't put the thought. Some of the myths out there that if you talk about it, you put it in their head. Just the opposite has been proven. If you talk about it and there is someone there on the edge, it's more likely to get that person to reach out and get help. But we have to get the media, we have to get people talking about it in a positive way, letting them know it is not only one of the leading causes of death in the nation, the second, nationally, the second leading cause of death for ages 10 to 24, it's also one of the leading causes of preventable death. Four out of five young people who will attempt suicide will give clear clinical warning signs before that attempt. Four out of five. I mean, one out of five. There's, there's not any of those warning signs. But 80% of the time, if we can train the educators, the community, the people who work with youth, the young people themselves, how to recognize and respond correctly to these warning signs, we have an opportunity. We're losing about 100 young people per week in our nation to suicide. 80 of them didn't have to die. If we could talk to the right people, get the right information where these warning signs could be identified and people get them appropriate help, we could save 80 out of that 100. Then we'll work on that 20. We'll work on that 20 after that. But we have come a long way, but we've got a long way to go, and that's why people like Dr. Gee and, uh, and uh, General DeWine and Representative Nelski and the governor here who stepped forward and signed this is making this known. Information sharing is a big key. I'll just add, well, let me just add one thing. I, I think there's two kinds of deaths that cause an awful lot of uh, 
measured in this country that are, are preventable, but that we sort of accept. And we say, well, there's nothing collectively can, well, that's horrible, but there's nothing we can do about it. One is suicide and there's auto accidents. Um, both of them uh, are huge killers of young people. Uh, and both of them, we just sort of say, well, we can't do anything about it. And, and, and the point that was just made, you know, if, if that many people were dying, uh, you know, for any other cause, we would be out there uh, raising money and we would be doing all these things and talking about it. Uh, and yet, these are, these are just going on. Uh, so I, I think that, you know, we have to just kind of get mad and say, we're not going to tolerate this. We're going to do what we can do because uh, many, many, many of these, majority of these, are in fact preventable.